Hello, welcome back. So today we're going to talk about some strategies for assessing the normality of a data set, right? So we know all about the normal distribution now, right? But what if I have some sort of sample and I want to see, well, could this potentially have come from a normal population? Well, there are numerical ways of doing this, like more complicated tests. And maybe we'll see some of those in the future. Okay, but we're looking at visual methods here. So one really obvious way of doing this, a simple way of doing it, is just to make a histogram and overlay a normal curve and just see how well that fits. All right, that's one way of doing it. The other way is what we might call a, a normal plot or normal probability plot. Okay, so let's take a look at these a histogram first. Okay, and I think this is pretty intuitive. Um, so our example here, we have the, the battery life of certain laptops here. All right, and say you just you wanted to see, I've got a sample. Um, I think our sample here, we've got 11 or 12 laptop batteries. Okay, and we want to see, does this fit a normal distribution? So if I took this data and I made a histogram, okay, you could overlay a normal line over that to see, okay, how well does it fit here? This distribution, now we only we have a small number of observations, only have four bins in our histogram, but we see, you know, the bins are kind of sticking out a little bit here, but, you know, that's fine. We only have 10 observations here. And maybe you're wondering, how do we decide the mean and standard deviation for this normal distribution? Well, most software that you, if you pop some data in there and tell it to create a histogram and overlay a normal line, um, most of the time it'll use the sample mean and sample standard deviation as the parameters for your normal distribution. There, okay, so that's like this one. It, it indicates our mean and our standard deviation up here. Okay, so it, it assumes well that's the mean of the distribution. Here's the standard deviation, and it draws that line according to that. All right, now this is a good strategy in some cases, and in some cases it is pretty obvious. But like this one, I mean, we know just by their nature, histograms with small numbers of observations kind of don't really work very well, right? Like this one had 10 observations, and I made four bins out of that. And it's, it's just not really that useful, not a great look. Um, and it, it can be unclear sometimes, okay? So this is a, a kind of a rough tool that you can use. But an even better tool is what's called your probability plot. Okay, so how do we do a probability plot? Take your data, sort it, all right? And then from each observation, once it's sorted, you're either gonna calculate a percentile or quantile, all right? Percentiles are just special cases of, of what's called a, a quantile. Or if we're, especially if we're checking does it fit a normal distribution? You calculate that observation z-score. Okay, so the z-score approach is, is what I think is probably most useful and easiest to interpret, especially when we're checking for a normal distribution. But you can make probability plots to check does my sample come from other distributions. Okay, that's where the quantile or percentile approach might come in handy. Okay, but when we're checking from a normal distribution, just make a z-score. So we'll take our data, we'll number it, and we usually want to put our x values on that x-axis, and then on our y-axis, plot it versus its z-score. So it's like a scatter plot of an observation versus its z-score. All right, so if these observations line up perfectly, right, in a, in a straight line there, that line being y equal to x, kind of a 45 degree line, that tells us that our data fits a normal distribution pretty well. All right, so let's look at a couple examples here. So we're back to this battery life data set. This first observation, or this first plot here, we're gonna plot using this, um, using its percentile. All right, so here's how you could calculate the percentile of each observation once I've ordered them, right, and then then plot them. So x here on my x-axis, percentile 
on my y-axis. Now some things we can take away. Notice our data does seem to hug that line pretty well. You kind of see it goes up a little bit there, but hugs the line pretty well um, for the most part. So, you know, even, even though we are using percentiles here, we can say it looks pretty good. All right, let's look at a plot with z-scores. Now notice this plot, yes, our, our y-axis is different. We have z-scores now, but the plot looks exactly the same. Okay, so it doesn't really matter. Um, it's not going to have an effect on how that plot looks, what I use on my y-axis, right? But as we'll see, I think z-scores make our interpretation a little bit easier. Okay, so notice how we, how we calculated our z-scores here. All right. So these, these fit pretty well. I think it'd be safe to say that this sample does come from a normal population, right? But what if I have something that doesn't come from a normal population? I randomly generated some data from an exponential distribution. All right, so we, we have an idea of what an exponential distribution might look like. If you don't, um, the point here isn't necessarily that it's exponential. The point is just that it's not normal, okay? So if I made a histogram, we notice that histogram looks extremely right skewed. If I overlay that normal curve, it definitely doesn't fit very well, right? We've got way up here, and the exponential distribution actually starts at zero, so there's nothing below there, right? It, it just doesn't fit this normal curve very well at all. All right, so that's pr pretty obvious, but what would an exponential distribution look like on a normal probability plot? All right, well, we can see that there's definitely some deviation from that center line, but there's an obvious systematic deviation, right? There's an obvious pattern to how it deviates, right? Obviously, it doesn't fit, but the manner in which it does not fit, right, can tell us a little bit about the original distribution, right? Like here, we kind of see this, this sort of pattern, right, where this tail is below, this tail is, is below the line as well, all right? And we see this right skewed histogram, okay? So this is where I think thinking about z-scores on our y-axis really helps us interpret things, okay? Because the, the systematic variation from that line can really tell us what does the shape of that distribution look like, okay? So if you have a light distribution, sometimes also called short-tailed, that means it's more peaked than a distribution when compared to the normal, right? The normal should have those, um, the normal distribution in a histogram should have those nice even tails on either side, all right? Something that's more peaked and maybe doesn't have as much area in the tails as you would want to be able to assume normality, its plot would look something like this. Now remember how this plot works, there's z-scores over here, x over here. So what that's telling me is for smaller values of x, okay, remember z-scores could be either positive or negative. The zero is right there in the middle. Let's think about how that relates to zero, right? A z-score of zero would mean things are close to the mean. So here I'm seeing for smaller values of x, there's z-scores closer to zero than I expect. I'm also seeing here for larger values of x, z-scores are closer to zero than I would expect. All right, so that tells me my distribution doesn't look normal. There's, there's just not enough area in those tails. All those observations are closer to the mean than you would expect. The opposite pattern, again, let's remember z and x here, this, mean, this would mean for smaller values of x, right? You're, you're dropping below this line, so you're seeing larger z-scores for smaller values of x. Here you're seeing larger z-scores for, for smaller values of x. All right, that tells me we, we have what's, what you might call heavy or longer tails. You have less peaking going on in that distribution. We can also tell skewness, right? Kind of like we saw in the last example, that was extremely right skewed. That meant that for smaller values of x, we were seeing larger z-scores than we expect. Right, for larger values of x, okay, we're seeing smaller z-scores than we expect. All right, same thing on left skewness. 
op it's at the opposite way, right? We're seeing smaller z scores here for small values of x, larger z scores for larger values of x than we expect. All right. Also, just kind of another side note on our probability plots. The larger sample size, and this, I mean this can really be said for anything in statistics, right? The larger the sample size, the better results we're going to get. All right. Well, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.